Perfect. You've got the heading. Great. When you when you see the word profit and loss, what are you thinking about? Very good. Okay, there's the first point. Income and expenses are recorded in the income statement, and we can calculate the profit or the loss for the year. There are different types of profit, we'll recap them. We've seen them before, really, but um, the textbook talks about them again, so we'll mention it. Okay, yeah, so bullet number one income and expenses are captured in the income statements. That's what you said. Okay, that's the, that's the first most important bit to think about. Okay, even if you look at the learning outcomes here, they said, by the end of this chapter, you'll be able to prepare the profit loss account and the income statements. You'll be able to explain the accounting statements and how they are used for the management process, combine the trading account and the profit loss account and the income statements, and include expenses like carriage, um, carriage outwards in the profit and loss account. Okay, so it's all calculating profit or loss. Obviously, a business would have a profit when which is bigger? The income or the expenses? The income. The income. <coughs> Underneath that, you could put two different profits. So the first one, number one, gross profit. You should remember how to calculate gross profit from before. What is the equation? Any idea? Uh, that's net profit. The gross profit is just looking at the buying and selling of goods. Okay. So sales. Oh yeah, the sales minus cost of sales. Correct. There's the equation. All right. So now you've got that. Number two. Here they refer to it as profit for the year. Profit for the year would be the same as net profit. Okay. Because it looks at everything. So you can say profit for the year slash net profit, either or. Mm -hmm. The profit for the year is calculated deducting all expenses from all income. So all income minus all expenses. Okay, things you've seen before, so nothing new there. Okay, the textbook re recaps the use of accounting information. This is theory. As I said before, I doubt theory will be tested much in your exam, mm -hmm. but maybe in the assignments. Okay, because the assignments obviously test a lot more content. The exam is only two papers, so they're a little bit uh, restricted in terms of what they can examine. Okay. But we can mention it, we can discuss it. Uh, so you can just put a separate bullet, uses of accounting information. So why would we want to use this? And obviously the focus here is on what accounting information. Expenses income. Correct. <laughs> okay, so the background is very straightforward. This you've seen before. Financial statements are produced for two purposes. Number one, they allow you to access finance. Providers of finance require information on the business and the manager or owner of the business will create financial statements. Number two, the managers or owners of the business need to gauge how well the business has performed and to provide information that will highlight areas that they can improve on. And that's decision making. Right? So we know accounting information is used for two things. You can maybe bullet it to summarize what they've said here. Number one, information to raise capital. So if I go to the bank and I want to raise capital, the bank's going to say, well, can I look at your financial statements? That's what they're going to ask for. Right, so info to raise capital. The banks want to see that information. And the second point would be um, internal decision making. So the manager would want to know how the business is performing because they need to make decisions internally. Are we going to produce this product, yes or no? Are we going to add more products to the line or not? Okay, good. Um, then there's one other concept they talk about here, which is stewardship. Do you know what that means? No. Steward. So like the word, like the name no. steward, steward and then ship. No. Okay, but uh, just write that word down. Stewardship. Steward. S T E W A R D. That's steward, and then the and then word ship, like the boat ship. Yeah, stewardship. Mm -hmm. Okay, stewardship is basically giving someone else the control to lead or navigate. It's like to 
it's like to steer almost. You can say uh, in in inverted commas steering or controlling the business. Okay, stewardship. And then the second is management. Okay, so stewardship would be more than management. Stewardship would be the person starting the business. Um, management would be the person employed just to look after the business. There's a difference. Okay, so stewardship is slightly higher in terms of the hierarchy. Okay, so you would have maybe board of directors would be stewardship. Managers would be uh, senior managers, supervisors, whatever the role is that, that would have to help manage and control the, the company. Okay. There's not much else we can say there. They, the textbook goes on. They give you a lot of information here about an example. They talk about a bank manager and the owner of the business, and they're looking at a business trying to raise capital here, okay, which is what we've already summarized. Okay, first bit of accounting. No, you don't. Uh, did you write management? No. Okay, yeah, the, the word management was the one after stewardship. I'm trying to check if there's some tissue here, sorry. Oh, yes, there you go. So, management? Yeah, management is decision making for day to day running of the business. That's what it's about. Okay, so the stewardship could be the person starting the business, the manager would be the person running the business. If that makes sense. <clears throat> Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we've covered the theory. The textbook changes focus. Now you've got notes here about the accounting. So you can put a heading here. <coughs> accounting for profit and loss. So now we know what profit and loss deals with. It looks at the ownership, it looks at running the business, it looks at making decisions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all of the stuff that we just wrote down. Now we need to look at, well, how does a business actually account for this? Yeah. Okay, we know that it's going to be where? Income statements. That's what you know. Uh, but we need to actually practically look at it now. Okay, so um, heading, accounting for the profit and loss. So is this going to, what, what is this going to do? We're going to do a T-account and we're going to do an income statement. Two things. Uh, we'll probably do that on a separate page. You can put theory here, that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you all the theory then. How's that? And then we can okay. do the, uh, we can do the yeah. practical separate. Okay, cool. okay, but put a heading, accounting for profit and loss. For the theory part. Oh uh, no, this is, well, for the theory part of the practical side. Yeah. Okay. Wow, this chapter is short. We've literally got a page and a half, and that's it. And then chapter 18, which we've already covered, then we'll jump to 21. Okay. okay. Right, so bullet number one, general ledger. That's the first place where you'll calculate profit and loss. So number one, if I'm looking at accounting for the profit and loss, there's two things that I want, obviously. I want to know what the gross profit is and I want to know what the net profit is. Disclosure happens in the income statement, which is separate. Um, I'm not looking at disclosure here yet. I'm looking at general ledger. So what is a general ledger? Do you remember? Yeah, it's just the end months. Uh, yes, the balances. So it's structured how? Debts good. Good, T-account. Okay, so you can put a note there. T-account for calculating Gross yeah. profit, uh, no, underneath that, so it's separate. Your general ledger is fine because that's what we're looking at. T account for calculating gross profit is, and this you can put in a special color, the trading account. Right, the trading account is used to calculate the gross profit. Um, to T account for calculating gross profit equals, okay, so which general ledger account do we calculate gross profit? It's the trading account. It's called the trading account. Okay, what are you going to see in the trading account then? If I'm trading, I'm going to be buying and selling goods. Mm -hmm. So what did we say earlier? Gross profit is calculated using? 
sales and cost of, uh, sales and cost of sales create. So underneath training account, you can say sales will be recorded which side debit or credit. Uh, well, the sale you would have to okay. So uh, just just take one step back just to think about it. You don't have to write it down, but just understand it. Okay, so uh, what balance does a sale account have? So Good. So if you want to close that T account off, yeah. what would you do to that account? Yes. Good. Okay, you would debit that account. So you would debit sales and then you would credit trading oh. accounts. Okay, because that's where you're calculating the gross profit. Okay, so sales, mm -hmm. you can say sales closed off two trading accounts. Okay, so I close off the sales by debiting it, I create the trading account. Does that make sense? Okay, that's what we're describing there. Okay, and then the next point, just asterisk, cost of sales. Um, two different scenarios could arise. You know that there are two different systems for managing stock. What are they? Perpetual and periodic. Good. So cost of sales, you can say, uh, depending on whether we have perpetual slash periodic, there will be different ways of um, accounting for, well, there'll be two ways of accounting for the um, cost of sales. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make here is that if it's periodic, you're going to have the cost of sales equation formula. If it's perpetual, you're just going to have cost of sales as cost of sales. Okay. Okay, so maybe you can just say here, um, perpetual slash periodic affects the calculation. Or fix the posting because we're posting to the general ledger. Okay, we'll do two examples this time, you'll see what it looks like, but for now we're just writing down theory. Fix posting. A fixed posting, yeah, posting is fine because you're looking at general ledger. Okay, that's the first one. Um, the next one, income statement. So you had a bullet for general ledger, have a bullet for income statement. You can fill it down there, there's only about two or three points we need to make. Okay, so you had one bullet for general ledger, just call this income statements. Okay. Right, first bullet you will show gross profit and net profit will be shown separately. So you've, you've kind of drawn this up before. Where do we have gross profit? At the top. Where do we have net profit? At the bottom. Okay, so GP and net profit. Calculate it separately. Um, and you need to make the same note as before. When we spoke about perpetual says periodic, that's going to affect disclosure. So you can say periodic slash perpetual will affect disclosure. Okay, not posting here because posting is for the T accounts. Disclosure here is for the presentation. Okay, how do we write all these different lines uh, or points? Okay. Can you fit one point there at the bottom? Yeah. Just one point. Um, carriage outwards mm -hmm. is carriage on sales. Well, is carriage on sales part of cost of sales? No. no. Okay, it's carriage on sales, not carriage on purchases. Okay, there's just the, it's literally one sentence here on page 135 just carriage describing outwards. it. Carriage outwards is carriage on sales. Those are the two words here. Okay, yes, they're expenses, but they're expenses that relate to the sales, not the cost of sale. Okay. okay. Right, so now we need to show the examples. So get a separate page. Now we're going to look at profit and loss and income statement. Okay, I'm going to use what they've used here just so we've got different types of expenses. Um, number one, you can say general ledger T account. Okay, I'm going to have to add to the example because the example doesn't have sales and cost of sales. So I'm going to put it in. They just gave you the gross profit, which is pretty pointless because in most cases you'll probably have to work it out. Right, so my example will be a little bit more difficult, to, difficult than theirs. Um, because we can look at both T accounts. Yeah, general ledger T accounts. 
you can say AO number one or bullet one. Draw up a tier count. It doesn't have to be big, it's small. Um, you're going to draw a tier count for the trading accounts. Okay, so big tier count, uh, five lines is enough. Don't need more than five lines. <coughs> Um, the first one, you actually need less than five. You can even make it three lines. The the second one will make five lines. Okay, the, the, the first one is short. Okay. Heading, trading accounts. Perfect. So earlier we said a trading account is going to calculate what? The cost of sales. sales. Which gives you the... Profit. Gross profit. Gross profit, correct. So where did we say sales was going to go? Debited. Well, the sales account will be debited. So what will happen to this account? Credit. Correct. So on the credit side, show sales. On the credit side, show sales. Um, I'll give you a figure. I'll give you a figure that makes up this 21,500. Okay, so... You don't have to. Yeah, yeah, just put sales. If there was a date, you'd put a date, but you don't have to worry about that now. Sales? Uh, let's use... Who did the folio be? The folio would be the general journal, because these are closing transfers. Okay, this happens at the end of every year, or month, depending on how you calc or when you calculate profit and loss. Okay, okay so 21.5. Uh, let's add... Let's make it 51,500. 51,500. Okay, perfect. Right, what else is going to go to the trading accounts? So, uh, cost of sales. Right, where would that go? <coughs> On that side. Yes, okay, because why? Let's think about it. The cost of sales has what balance? A debit balance. So if you close it off, you would credit that account and you would debit this one. Also, general. Also, same thing, yeah, closing transfer. Uh, the amount you'd have to make this thirty thousand, and then you'll get the right gross profits. Okay. Okay. Now let's close it off. Two totals. Okay. With closing transfers, with profit and loss, and trading accounts, do they have balances? No. Okay. These are working accounts to calculate something. Right. So you won't have balance brought down. You won't have balance carried down. That doesn't apply. Okay, because these are working accounts. Working accounts close themselves off. It's like a suspense account. You, you wouldn't want to see a balance on the suspense. That means there's problems. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, which side's bigger? Sales account. So write down 51,500 in the total and do it on the same uh, on the other side as well. Okay, so what are we missing? We're missing a gross profit. So 21,500 is the missing figure. So write down 21,500. Uh, yeah, as the total. No, no, uh, the, the amount has to go underneath the amounts. This one, yeah. Yeah, 20, 21,500. Yeah. Uh, no, in the gap, you're right. Yeah. No, no, in the gap. Yeah. Yeah, in the gap. 21,500. So, no, no, that's right. Don't change anything. It's perfect. It's perfect. There, 21,500 in the gap. Are you balancing the count off? Okay, where does that go? Profits. It is the gross profit, but where does it go? Um, almost profit and loss tier counts. So profit and loss. In, bra in brackets, you can say GP gross profits. Okay, because it's representing the GP, but the GP is in the gross profits. Uh, that's going to be transferred to the net profits calculation. Okay, so what do we calculate in the trading accounts? The gross profit. Does the business only have the gross profits? No. no. The business has other income, other expenses, and they have a net profit. Okay, so where does the net profit get calculated? We didn't mention that. We should have. Uh, underneath net profit, you can put an asterisk, profit and loss tier accounts. Yeah, profit and loss. T accounts. Okay. 
Right, so draw up another tier count. Uh, this one you need a few more lines. Maybe put six lines. We won't put that many, but we'll put some. Okay, just to show the income and expenses. Okay, the heading for this account is profit and loss. That's the general ledger tier count that we're calculating uh, or using to calculate the this is, sorry, the profit, profit and loss. loss, yeah. Profit and loss accounts. Okay. All right, you've got it, that's good. Okay, so you've already got one amount that you can put in the profit and loss. The gross profit. Where is the gross profit going to go? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so highlight the GP that you had there because every debit has a credit. Right, so earlier we wrote down a debit for profit and loss, so we're going to credit the... No, you don't write gross profit, you write trading accounts, which is the gross profit. Okay, remember they're contra accounts, so the heading for the one is the heading for the other. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so trading accounts is referenced in profit and loss. That, re that represents the gross profits. Exact same amount, 21500. Good. Okay, every debit has a credit, and that debit goes with that credit. Right, so what else are we going to put in the profit and loss account? Well, what is the purpose of the profit and loss account? To calculate the net profits. Mm -hmm. So what else are you going to see there potentially? Um, other income. Profits. Exactly. So where would you put other income in this account? Credit side, correct. Okay, why? Let's think logically. If I had rent income, rent income will have what balance? Rent income, yeah. The income will have a credit balance. So how do you close that account off? With a debit. Okay, so if I have a rent income, so like imagine a, a diagram, a, a T account. What is that T account? Rent income. Where's the balance? It's on the credit side. Okay, so how do I close this account off? Debit the account. Okay, if I debit this account to close it off, then I need to open a credit here. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's write down rent income on the credit side, yes. Okay, rent income, credit side. Uh, let's keep the number simple to calculate, so 500. Okay, what other income could I have? Um, Any other income? income? Good, let's put that one as well. We'll just put two. Um, and let's make this 1,000. Okay, so do you agree those are income line items that will increase the credits that the business has? Okay, where are you going to put the expenses on the debit side? Okay, so let's start with, let's say, rent expense. Let's make that a thousand. Wages, let's make that 500. Insurance, 200. I'm just using the same words that they've used in their example. Okay, uh, you've got that one. Uh, motor expenses. Um, and let's do one more, stationary. Uh, motor expenses, let's make it 100. Um, and let's use stationary, let's make that... Let's make it 100 as well, just so the numbers are simple to calculate. Right, so now you've got everything. What are you going to do with this account? Balance it. Close it off. You are not balance brought down, balance carried down. We don't have those things for these accounts because they're closing accounts. Okay, so you only have a total and that's it. Which side's bigger? Yeah, so working accounts never have balances. Can you think of any other working accounts? We spoke about one last week when we did asset disposal.
Okay. Okay, so in the asset disposal account, did I have a balance brought down, carried down? No. no. Okay, the asset disposal account is just used to calculate the profit or loss. Same thing here. Profit and loss is the profit or loss. Okay, so 21 plus 15 is 23,000. That's the biggest total. Okay, obviously the credits are bigger. Perfect. 23,000 on both sides. Now we need to calculate the difference. So what is the difference? What's the missing figure? Uh, let's see. 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 1, 2, 1, 1. yes. So we, that would be total base profit and loss over? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, yeah, you'll write in that amount there. Yeah. Yes, and then you need to reference it correctly. So let me ask you about this account. Whose account is this? Um, Why? Because it's profit. Which profit? Mm -hmm. Net profit. Mm -hmm. Okay, net profit. Oh, don't mind net profits. Um, it's the net profit that the owner gets. Uh, so now which account represents the owner? Uh, that's not an account. Owner's equity is a grouping for different accounts. What is the owner's account called? Mm -hmm. Capital. Okay, so that's the word we write down. Right, so you can write down capital there. If you want to, you can say next to it, net profit, and then arrow, owner's equity. Okay, so the net profit will do what to the owner's equity? It will increase it, obviously. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, and that's what the accounts will look like. Right, for the trading accounts. Okay. Okay, then you've got... Income statement. Um, maybe use a separate page because yeah, we'll need quite a few lines. So that's the one disclosure, number two now. Income statements. Uh, I want to use the same numbers. Okay, so I'm going to just keep that in front. But we'll just change the format. Okay, so this was, this was T account posting in terms of closing off accounts to the T accounts, general ledger, so debits and credits. In the income statement, you won't have debits and credits. In the income statement, you'll have columns and totals. Right, so perfect. You've got the income statement, draw two columns at the end, one for the working and one for the total. Two copies at the end. Okay, so what do we start with in the income statement? Do you still remember the format? Kind of? Yeah. Sales. Good. So write down sales. Um, how much were our sales here? Five one five hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It will be a working. So it'll be five one. Yeah. Five one. Five hundred. Okay. Okay. Cost of sales. Thirty thousand. Um, are you happy with that 30,000? Yeah. No. What do you need to show? Why? Because it's a negative. Yeah. Cost of sales is the expense. Yeah. So only, only in the income statement do brackets have meaning. Okay. okay. What does that give you? Uh, no, we've got the amount, but I'm saying what does it give you? The sales and the cost of sales. Oh, uh, gross profits. Okay. That's what you need to write down next. Okay, yeah, the answers we've done, so I'm just going to take it straight from this. 2, 1, 500, so you don't have to work out anything else. Okay. What happens now after that? Other income. Okay, so other income we had two. Rent and interest. The rent was 500, the interest was 1,000. Um, yeah, just write down rent income. I said other income. Mm, it's better to be more specific. Okay, then, uh, 500 for the first one, 
a thousand for the second. Okay, where do you put the one five? Good. Okay, and then other expenses, eh? Right, and we just we're using these ones. All right, so rent, wages, insurance, motor, stationery. That's it. How many? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, rent expense, wages, insurance, motor expenses, stationery. That's it. Okay, I'll read the amounts. Uh, rent. Okay. Oh, stationery. Okay. Okay, fine rent. Rent was a thousand. Wages is five hundred. Then two hundred, and then hundred hundred. Um, we need to add all of those up. So that's one five six seven eight nine. Nineteen hundred. Uh, again, be careful. Don't forget the brackets. Yeah. Right, that's it. Summarize. Um, all of it gives you what. Let's use the correct vocabulary. Uh, you've got the total, is it? Okay. okay, but what do we call it? Profit for the year. So, profit for the year is that last line, and then that will be the big total that you'll put a, two lines on. Okay. Profit for the year, or net profit. Profit for the year is better, because that's what they normally refer to it as, but it represents a net profit. Simple, hey? Yeah. Okay. And that's chapter 16. Trading account profit loss. 17, actually. 16, we're done. Okay. All right. Uh, can you pop that work program so we can see what else we need to do now? I think we are almost there. 21, 22. Yeah. Uh, you can tick. You can tick 17. Another one complete. Okay. Let's jump to 21 now. Okay. Here's it. Let's see how long 21 is. Okay, 176 is the end, where's the beginning? Uh, okay, this is a slightly longer chapter, but it's just looking at stuff that you've already covered. Financial statements. More theory than anything else. Um, a little bit of disclosure. Yes, okay, and then we've covered that. Okay, I think we can finish the theory today. Uh, 21 is not that long. How long is 22? Uh, it's about seven pages. Yeah, and then 23 is tapped up to be separate. Yeah. yeah, I think we should be able to do this, eh? maybe. Let's see how we go. Uh, financial statements, most of this is revision. There's not too much here that we need to recap because you've covered a lot of it already. Okay, this, you'd have to start a new, um, new page, new chapter, new heading. Okay, it's a nice section actually. A lot of it, as I said, is revision.